My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today's video is on the subject of inflammation and its role in heart disease and in particular I wanted to focus on an anti-inflammatory agent which may reduce the risk of heart attacks. This is all very new research and I thought I would share this with you. So let's get started. Okay, despite all the advances in cardiology, we are still very limited in what we can do to prevent heart attacks and vascular events. What we do know is that chronic inflammation is perhaps the most important underlying process that leads to the development of heart disease. And tackling the inflammation may hold the key to preventing heart disease in the future. Now, before I start, I would like to emphasize that some of the best anti-inflammatory agents in the world are already freely available to us. Good sleep, good exercise, good healthy, unadulterated nutrition, and a joyous, stress-free mindset. And I think all patients should aspire to incorporate these in their lives. Today, however, I'm going to talk to you about an anti-inflammatory agent which may change how we treat heart disease patients in the future. This agent has been around for ages, but it is only recently that uh, there has been interest in its ability to alter the course of heart disease. This agent is called colchicin. Colchicin is an anti-inflammatory drug which is commonly available and commonly used for treatments of conditions like gout and pericarditis. Given its anti-inflammatory effects, scientists have started questioning whether it may reduce inflammation in patients with heart disease, and therefore, could it prevent future events in such patients? There are some promising data I would like to share with you. There was a study called COLCOT, C-O-L-C-O-T. In this study, over 4,700 patients who had had a heart attack in the prior 30 days were randomly assigned to receive colchicine, 0.5 milligrams a day, or placebo, two weeks after their heart attack. And at the end of two years, the colchicine group were found to have a significantly lower event rate. By events, I mean a combination of cardiac death, heart attacks, strokes, and hospitalization for angina. When you dissect the data, the main benefits were seen in lower rates of stroke and angina. However, there was about uh, an 18% discontinuation rate, with, meaning that about 18% of patients discontinued the medications before the end of the study, and therefore the results of the study did not really have any practice-altering consequences. Nevertheless, it stoked an interest into more research in, into this agent. Uh, only recently, however, I think last year, there was a most interesting study which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This is called the LODOCO2 study, L-O-D-O-C-O-2, Low Dose Colchicine 2 study. In this study, investigators were interested in looking at patients with chronic coronary disease, as opposed to with the previous study I discussed in which patients had had a recent heart attack. In this particular study, they were just interested in people with chronic heart disease. And they assigned 2,762 patients with chronic heart disease to 0.5 milligrams daily of colchicine, in addition to whatever they take, and 2,760 patients to a placebo. And they found that after a median time of 28 uh, months or so, the event um, the rate was much lower in patients in the colchicine group. So an event included heart attack, stroke, need for stents, and that had occurred in 187 patients in the colchicine group, which equates to 6.8%, and 264 patients in the placebo group, which equates to 9.6%. They also found that patients in general tolerated the colchicine well, apart from perhaps uh, some more muscle ache in some patients. And this has been a very interesting study, and based on this evidence, some doctors are now beginning to prescribe colchicine 0.5 milligrams daily, in addition to other preventative strategies in patients with chronic coronary artery disease. So this is all very interesting, and I hope it will trigger off more research interest into looking into inflammation and anti-inflammatory therapies in general as a target for heart disease prevention and treatment. If you get a chance, please do have a look at the low do co 2 study, uh, it is possible that your doctors may not even know about this interesting bit of research. I certainly admit that I didn't know about it until only a few days ago. And therefore, 
one of the aims of my channel and the vlogs I do is to empower the patient to go and bring this up with their doctors and initiate a discussion as to whether they may benefit from this medication. Unfortunately, most medical practice these days, certainly in the UK, is dictated by endorsements from organizations such as NICE. Uh, but unfortunately, this kind of endorsement may not happen for several years. And I believe that doctors and patients do not need to wait for such an endorsement to start benefiting if there is good evidence that benefit can be had. Once again, I wanted to thank you all for the kind support you've offered me. And after yesterday's rant, the management of the hotel I'm staying in were kind enough to contact me and say that they would be happy to try and work with me to make things better. So once again, thank you for all your overwhelming support and kindness. I'm going to try and do a small uh, video every day as part of my quarantine project. I'm not going anywhere for the next 10 days. So I'll try and do more videos and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow. All the best.